Okay, okay. Get that out of the way. Now, take your Bibles. Turn with me to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. While you're turning there, have you ever thought about how much damage a lie does? You know, we, we think of lies as really nothing big, nothing trivial, I mean something trivial. But beloved, lies do a lot of damage. Do you realize that if the Chinese had not lied about this coronavirus, we'd be sitting inside now instead of in our cars. I mean, that lie, that lie has brought so much suffering, so much hurt, so much pain, not only in America, but the world over, the world over. I mean, a lie, a lie. Has, has took so many, many lives. And that's the way lives are. That's the way lives are. They're destructive. They tear down. They destroy. They're of the devil. They're of the devil. Well, I want to talk with you today, not about lies. I want to talk to you about the truth. The truth. Look with me in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, and we're going to begin with verse 1, and we're going to read through verse 4, and the Bible says, Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. Listen to this. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to gather in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, for each and every one that's here, everyone, God, that's viewing, everyone, Lord, that will hear these, these words and this message. We pray, Father, that, God, you bless each and every one. We ask you, God, Lord, to to do thy will, to have thy will in this service. We thank you, Lord, for the way you've already blessed our heart with the songs that have been sung, God, with the prayers that have been prayed. And now, Lord, we ask you as we break the bread of life, God, to bless it as you did so long ago when you fed the multitudes. And, Lord, to use it. To use it to bring glory and honor to thy name. Father, if there be one, one who hears the sound of my voice who are not saved, I pray, God, I pray with all my being that, God, today they might get saved. I pray, Father, that we as Christians, that we will learn, that we will grow, that we will draw nigh to thee. God, that you'll just bless us and use us for thy glory and thy praise. God, bless all the services that are going on all across this nation where the truth is being preached. And God, we'll give you praise and we'll give you the glory. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray. Amen. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, Moses sang a song to the children of Israel. And in that song, beloved, he said, he, he, he said, Hear, O ye heavens, hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. He calls on heaven above and earth 
to hear. Because you see, what he's about to say is so important. It is so wonderful. It is so fantastic that he wants all of creation to hear it. He says, I will publish, here it is, the name of the Lord and ascribe ye greatness unto our God. Did you get that? Moses, beloved, tells us or is about to tell us God's name. He says he is the rock, the God of truth. Did you know, beloved, that from then on, over and over and over in the, in the scriptures, he is called the God of truth. The God of truth. The God of truth. And well, he should be because, let me tell you, God is truth. And, and everything that comes, beloved, from God is truth. Notice in verse 4, he says, beloved, uh, he says, without, he is without iniquity and just and right. So you see, there can be no untruth in God. No untruth comes from God. Now, get the picture here. God is truth. All that comes from him is truth. You know, that's kind of hard for us to comprehend, isn't it? I mean, beloved, we live in a sin-cursed world. We live in a world of lies. A world, beloved, that's dominated by the father of lies, by the devil himself. You know, lies seem to be all that we hear on every side. We hear them from our lies, from our politicians, lies from our so-called experts, lies from our leaders, lies from those all around us. If you doubt that, just take a moment and stop and think, beloved, of all the lies that we've been told since COVID-19, beloved, uh, uh, first started. I mean, you know, first, you know, you know, don't wear a mask. Now, wear a mask. These are our experts. You know, first, uh, go outside, get in the fresh air, and now stay in, stay in, stay in. And on and on and on and on it goes, the lies. So here we are. Living, beloved, in a world of lies, controlled by the father of lies, conditioned on every side to believe and accept the lies. Oh, but listen, listen. There is a God in heaven who is as stable and solid as a rock. Who is the God of truth? Who is without iniquity? Who is just? Who is right in all of his way? But how? How do we get that truth that is God? See, here's the problem. How does that God get the truth down to us who live in a world of lies. Folks, the God of truth did it two main ways. He did it with his word, what we call the Bible. Amen? Jeremiah 7, excuse me, John 17, 17. Jesus was praying, and this is what Jesus prayed. He was praying for us, by the way. And he says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Woo! Thy word is truth. Is truth. First Peter. First Peter chapter 1. If you've got your Bible, turn there. First Peter chapter 1. Oh, excuse me. First Peter uh, yeah, chapter 1. Reading verses, I'm going to begin with verse uh, 19. Listen to what he says. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, 
until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. He says we've got something more sure. More sure. More sure than what? If you read the verses before, more sure than what you see because he was talking about what he saw. More sure than what you hear because he was talking about what he hear, heard. He said we've got something more sure. What is it? Verse 20 and 21, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old times by the will of men, uh, of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost or by, by the Holy Spirit. Beloved, God said, Paul Peter says, we got something more sure than what you see, more sure than what you hear. We've got the Word of God, the Word of God. The God, you see, folks, the God of truth wanted to get that truth down to us. So he moved on holy men, and they spake the truth of God, and the Scriptures were written down, were written down. That's why 2 Timothy 3.16 says this. All scripture, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now how in the world, how in the world can the Bible do all of that? How can it correct? How can it reprove? How can it instruct in righteousness? Because it is truth. God's truth sent down to us. To us. Let me tell you, we're living in a time, beloved, when the Bible is being mocked and laughed at and ridiculed and dissected and cut to pieces and thrown apart. Beloved, we're living in a time when the Word of God, even by some who call themselves Christian, is being thrown out. But I want you to know it's the truth. It's the truth. So God gave us truth in the scripture. All scripture is truth. But you know, in the fullness of time, God sent down his truth to us in another way. A totally astounding way. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. First verse says... In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That word, Word, is capitalized. That means, beloved, it's talking about a person. It says, and the Word was God, and the, uh, and was, uh, excuse me, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then in verse 14, it says, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Oh, oh glory. Glory to God. God himself came down and took a body of flesh, beloved. He was full of grace and truth. Truth. And his name, his name was Yeshua. Jesus. God saves. Folks, he was and is the personification of truth. That's why Jesus said of himself, I am the way and the truth and the life. Folks, he came. He came that you and I might know the truth, might walk in the truth, might live in the truth. Everything about him, just like the Father is truth, everything that he said, everything that he did, everything that he prophesied, Everything about him is true. Whoa, amen. I'll amen myself since I ain't getting no beeps on the horns. Did you get that? You who live 
in a sinful world, you who are, are bombarded with lies on every side, you who are blinded by the father of lies, truth has come, beloved, in the person of Jesus. So we have the written word and we have the living word. We have truth, truth. Now, with that said, let me tell you some things about truth. First of all, beloved, truth cannot be ignored. Cannot be ignored. Oh, let me tell you, beloved, the truth can't be ignored because sooner or later, you're going to have to face it. You're going to have to face it. I, you know, I, we like to ignore truth. I've known people, beloved, who have tried, tried to ignore the truth. Maybe you have too. I, I remember a man. His mother was up in age, and I mean way up in age. And she had no business on the road. I mean, she should not have been driving. And everybody tried to tell her, her her son, you shouldn't, she shouldn't be driving. She shouldn't be driving. She shouldn't be driving. And you know, he ignored it. He ignored the truth that she was not able to drive. And that went on and went on. Now, why he ignored it, I don't know. I, I think he knew it would break his mama's heart if she couldn't drive. But he just ignored what everybody said. And it was truth until, until one day she had a wreck. I mean a bad wreck. But thank God it was a miracle of God. Nobody was hurt. But he then had to face the truth. The truth. I've known people, beloved, who have, have, have been told they had cancer. Told that, that, that they could be treated, but, but they didn't want to hear it. They didn't want to believe it. I've known folks who knew something was wrong and they suspected it to be cancer. And they would not go to the doctor because they didn't want to face what might have been the truth. And by the way, I have preached the funerals of some who've done that very thing. What I'm telling you is, beloved, you got you can't ignore truth. It's going, you're going, you're going to face it one day. One day. I remember a man who found out his son was on drugs. Broke his heart. Broke his heart. But the thing that was bothering him, that bothered him so bad was he now he had to go tell. That boy's grandfather. And that boy's grandfather doted on his grandson. And he didn't know how he was going to tell him how, what he was going to say when he, he told his grandfather that the one he loved so much, more than he loved himself, was doing drugs. Well, finally, he went to the father. To, that father went to the grandfather. And he said, I don't know how to tell you this, Eddie. He said, but your grandson is on drugs. He's on drugs bad. The grandfather looked at him and he stiffened his back and he said, no. No, he's not. How do you know that? And the father told him. And the grandfather said, no, I don't believe it. He's just a teenager. He's just going through a phase. He'll snap out of it. He's not on drugs. Finally, the day came when that grandfather had to face it. A lot of things happened. A lot of things happened. And finally, he had to face it. Boy had been gone for three days. Nobody knew where he was. His mom and daddy were worried to death. Sixteen years old. Gone. Grandfather went looking him. And he found him. 
found him back in the woods with a bunch of his friends and they were doing drugs. Grandfather pulled up on that truck, beloved, he stepped out. He told his grandson, he said, boy, get in my truck. And the grandson looked at his grandfather and said, no, no, I'm not going. And the old man went back to his truck and reached in and pulled out a 38 pistol, cocked it, put it to his head, tears running down his face. He said, you get in this truck or I'm going to blow my brains out. Thank God that boy knew that his granddaddy meant it. And he got in the truck. But the old man was crushed. He was crushed. And he died with a broken heart. I know that because it was my daddy who did that. It was my daddy. You see, folks, truth cannot be ignored. Because sooner or later, sooner or later, you have to face it. You have to face it. You see, folks, truth, truth will stand when all the lies are revealed. For what they are, lies, the truth will stand above. Help me. Help me, lost person. Have you heard the truth from God's word? Have you heard that, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God? And the truth taps you on the shoulder and says, that's you, that's you, that's you. Have you heard? Have you heard the truth say the wages of sin is death? Not just physical death, but eternal, everlasting death in a lake of fire, in a place of torment. Have you heard? Have you heard about the love of God? That God so loved the world, so loved you, that He gave His only begotten Son to die in your place, to bear your sin debt, to bear your penalty, that you might be saved. Have you heard? Have you heard the truth that if you will call upon the name of the Lord, thou shalt be saved? Have you heard? Oh, I've heard it, preacher. I heard it, but I choose to ignore it. I'll just pretend it isn't so. I won't think about it. I won't listen to it. I won't visit a church or let anyone talk to me about it. I was talking to someone this week who told me they tried to talk to someone about the Lord and, and they would not listen. They didn't want to hear it. I'll just go along like I am, preacher. Enjoying my sin, enjoying my wickedness, enjoying my rebellion against God, ignoring God, ignoring Jesus, ignoring the scripture, and living a lie. And I'll be all right. Oh, foolish, foolish soul, look up ahead. Don't you see that flaming furnace at the end of your life? That's hell, friend. That's true. That's true. That's true. Hear. Hear the cries of the damned. They shriek in agony and torment. They cry for mercy that cannot come. That's truth, friend. That's true. That's the truth that you will face if you continue believing a lie. If you continue ignoring the truth. Truth has come. Truth has come and you cannot ignore it. Oh, you can pretend, but somewhere up ahead, truth will shine forth as true. No, yes, and you can only believe it and receive it by accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior or continue believing a lie. A lie. 
second, second, not only, beloved, can you not ignore truth, but you cannot change truth. Folks, God is truth. <laughs> Listen. His word is truth. Jesus is truth. And the only way that you can change truth is by changing God. And beloved, no one can change God because God is immutable. And that's just a big word that means he is unchangeable, unchanging. What does the Bible say? I am the Lord, I change not. Malachi 3 verse 6. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. You see, God is unchangeable, beloved. God is truth. So truth is unchangeable. Yet there are those. There are those who are adamant, beloved, that truth is whatever you decide to believe. That truth is whatever you decide to believe or you decide to think. Let me ask you a question. If I say, if I say it's raining today here at Cornerstone, boy, it's just pouring down. I mean, it's coming in waves. Does that make it so? Does that make it so? You say, preacher, you're crazy. Look, the sun's shining. It's a beautiful day. And I say, well, that's what you believe. I believe it's raining. I believe it's raining. Folks, have I changed the truth by what I believe? No. No. The truth stands, beloved, it stands, regardless of what I may believe. I remember years ago, I preached, and after the service, we had a visitor, and that visitor, young lady, asked if she could talk with me, and I said, sure. And I took her into my office and began to talk to her, and uh, she, she, she was lost, she was lost, but the Holy Spirit had dealt with her. And I was telling her about the, the terrors of hell and, 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 and how Jesus could and would save her if she would re receive him by faith as Lord and Savior. And I asked her, I said, do you want to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior? And she looked at me a moment, and honestly, she trembled. She trembled. And finally, she said, that's your belief. I don't believe that. And I said, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. That's not my belief. That's what God says. And God speaks the truth. I told her, I said, it don't matter what you think or what I think. What matters is truth. What God says is truth. I said, suppose, I looked at her, I said, suppose, I said, I said, I, you're wearing a, a, a red dress. Is that truth? She said, no, no, it, it, it's black. I said, that's right. And what I think doesn't change the truth, does it? doesn't change the truth. Neither does what you and I think about hell or about Christ. It doesn't change the truth. Folks, listen. You can't change the truth, but, but oh, how people try. Christian, truth says you're not saved by works, but by faith. But oh, so many professing Christians are trusting in their works to get them to heaven. Somebody says, 
But preacher, I try to live right. I, I attend church. I treat people good. I tithe. I sing in the choir. I do all of these things that God tells me to do. It doesn't matter what you think. What matters is truth. What God says. Preacher, surely I'll go to heaven when God sees all my good works. Doesn't matter what you think. Matters what God says. Listen to the truth, folks. All our righteousness is as filthy rags, God says. The very best we do as humans is as filthy rags in the sight of God. Isaiah 64, 6. But preacher, it just seems to me, doesn't matter how it seems to you or to me, all that matters is the truth. The truth says there's a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end therein is death. Is death. And the truth is you are not saved by your works. You are saved by faith. Faith in Christ's finished work on Calvary. And then Christians, beloved, will try to go the other way. Well, I'm not saved by works, but by faith. So works aren't important. Hey, I, I won't go to church because I don't have to. I'm saved. I, I, won't, I won't tithe because I don't have to. I'm saved. I'm saved by faith. I, I, I'm not going to witness because I don't have to. I'm saved by faith. I'm not going to be obedient to God because I don't have to. I'm saved by faith. Listen to the truth. Listen to the truth, Christian. The truth says that obedience and serving God is evidence that you are saved. That you are saved. It's evidence that you have been changed. Your heart has been changed, beloved, by the power of God. By the power. Thank you. By the power of God. Listen to the truth in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. Listen to this. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now listen to verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. If you are saved, beloved, listen, you want to obey God. You want to serve God. You want to witness. You want to be kind. You want to obey the Lord if you are saved. God changes your want to. Your want to. You are His workmanship. That means that God does a work in you. You are created in Christ Jesus Unto good works. Unto good works. Listen to James. James chapter 2. James chapter 2. James 2 verse 17 and 18. Even so faith. What does she say? I got faith. I'm saved by faith. Listen. Listen. Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Look at verse 18. Yea, a man say thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. I will show thee my faith by my works. By my works. Don't you see, folks? Real, real. Saving faith produces works in you. You say you have faith. Show others your faith without your works. You can't do it. The only way you can is by your works. By your works. 
So don't tell me, beloved, that it's not important to obey God, to be faithful to God, to serve God. We're going to have a judgment about that very thing. We Christians are going to be there. We're going to be the ones who are judged at the judgment seat of Christ. We'll be judged according to our works since we have been saved. Since we've been saved. Somebody says, well, I believe that works aren't important. It's faith. Folks, that's what this whole message is about. You cannot ignore truth. You cannot change truth by believing something different. The truth is of God. It is unchangeable. It's unchangeable. Folks, we live in a world of lies. But I want you to understand and know that God is truth. The God of truth is his name. And he sent truth down to us in his written word, word, the Bible, and in his son, Jesus, the living word. Therefore, we are without excuse. We can't ignore the truth and we can't change the truth. But what we can do, what we can do is to accept the truth and believe the truth. And act on the truth. If you do, as Jesus said, we will know the truth. And the truth shall set us free. Free from Satan. Free from sin. Free from deception and lies. Free from guilt and shame. Free from death and hell. But if we don't accept and believe the truth, listen to me, the truth will be our judge. Will be our judge. Either at the judgment seat of Christ or at the great white throne judgment. Oh, won't you, won't you receive and believe the truth? Today, if you do, Christian, if you do, you will love him, you will serve him, you will live your life for him. You will bring glory to his name by the life you live, by the person you are. If you do, lost person, you will not hesitate. You will not hesitate. She will run and fall down before that old rugged cross. And you will call upon the name of the Lord. You will ask Jesus to save you as you receive him by faith as your Lord and your Savior. And oh, we invite you, we beseech you to do that today, today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for truth. Lord, I get so tired of the lies all around us. I get so tired, God, of the deceptions. But I'm so glad there's a God in heaven. Thy word is truth. That Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Oh God, may we live our lives in the truth of thy word. Father, I ask you to hear the prayers of everyone here. Lord, you know we don't have an altar. But right now, these cards altars where people are meeting you. Father, we ask you to meet with them. And God, whatever they're praying for, 
be it, Lord, a rededicating their life to thee, to serve you more, to love you more, to, to, to be more of what you would have them to be. Be it, Lord, someone, God, who's praying for lost loved ones or lost families who are deceived by the lies of the devil. God, I pray you'll answer every prayer. I pray, God, you'll meet every need. God, we love you and we praise you. And God, if there'll be one calling out to thee right now, asking Jesus to save them, God, we know, Father, even now you're moving. And God, thy Holy Spirit is doing his work. And that one who's calling in faith is being born again into the family of God. God, we praise you, we thank you for all that you are and all that you have done and all that you're going to do. In Jesus Christ's name, we do pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you so much for coming. We love you all. Be sure and, and follow the, 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 the deacons as they uh, try to help you out. We don't want anyone to... Uh, to to have a fender bender, so be careful as you leave. Have a wonderful day. Remember the service tonight. Got a message God's really laid on my heart. I hope you'll hear it. God bless you all. Thank you.